Are historians correct in rating George Washington as one of America's best presidents? Washington established the presidency as a combination of dignity, professionalism, and strength while realizing his limitations and America's restricted abilities in its infancy. He began by establishing the essential cornerstones of the federal government, such as filling positions in the new national courts following the passage of the Judiciary Act of 1789, conducting the first census in 1790, and creating the first cabinet. Selecting various cabinet members, Washington realized he needed more perspectives on law and politics, so he wanted advisors with differing beliefs and backgrounds. Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson and Secretary of Treasury Alexander Hamilton held opposing opinions about the extent of the government. Jefferson felt the government should restrain itself based on the Constitution and use a strict interpretation. On the other hand, Alexander Hamilton believed that the Constitution was a loose framework and that Washington and Congress should use its elasticity and implied powers to make legislation and agencies according to each situation. Washington would listen to both sides, but would more often side with Hamilton. One famous case involved the First Bank of the United States. The Constitution laid out a framework for taxes and a budget, but did not specify the creation of a central bank. Hamilton wanted to create a national bank to collect, hold, and distribute government money. Jefferson opposed this because the Constitution does not mention banks. Washington approved the bank's establishment. The bank contributed to a broader rift that would later cause Jefferson to leave the cabinet. Washington won re-election in 1792, unanimously sweeping the Electoral College again. When the French Revolution broke out, many, including Jefferson, wanted to aid the revolutionaries to further liberty. Washington declared the nation's neutrality in this event and the following war between Britain and France. After farmers and manufacturers of whiskey in places like western Pennsylvania rebelled against taxes, Washington demonstrated the strength of the presidency. He led troops to crush the Whiskey Rebellion, which he defeated with time and intimidation rather than force in 1794. That same year, Jay's treaty was signed with Britain to tie up loose ends left after the revolution. Americans were generally wary of the treaty, which passed due to Washington's popularity, although it slightly eroded. He exited office after two terms by giving his farewell address, which warned against entangling alliances with other nations and political divisions that he saw between his cabinet members. In his speech, Washington wrote, In contemplating the causes which may disturb our union, it occurs as a matter of serious concern that any ground should have been furnished for characterizing parties by geographical discriminations, northern and southern, Atlantic and western, whence designing men may endeavor to excite a belief that there is a real difference of local interests and views. One of the expedients of party to acquire influence within particular districts is to misrepresent the opinions and aims of other districts. You cannot shield yourselves too much against the jealousies and heartburnings which spring from these misrepresentations. They tend to render alien to each other those who ought to be bound together by fraternal affection. Did Washington do his best in establishing the office of the presidency? Was he correctly warning about geographic or partisan differences? I'm Mr. Frederick Scott Smith. Have a good day. I know I will.